What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 most shocking WWE wrestler transformations, man, uh, by uh, WrestleMania. It's always cool to see how a wrestler first got into the business or how they started at the beginning of their maybe their WWE run and then their transformation, either the character, the physical appearance to how they are towards like maybe like or where they are now or maybe towards the end of their WWE run. Um, prime example, Drew McIntyre, even though Vince and, and management was very high on him back in the day things happen and you know they end up releasing him he looked completely different back then from where he does now he put on a lot more muscle mass he looks completely different man he he definitely took time to hone his craft and and uh, work on his physical appearance and you can see you can definitely see the transformation there so i'm sure they'll probably have him in this video only makes sense uh so we're gonna check out some of these crazy transformations from wrestlers from when they started to where they are now or where they ended off so should be a good video let's get right into this one the change can bring something brand new to a popular persona well the change can completely flop and can lead to fans demanding that wrestler returns to their former persona join us now as wrestlemania looks at 10 of the biggest wwe character transformations that shocked fans I'll subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Bradshaw to JBL. Mm. Following WrestleMania 20, WWE as a matter of urgency needed to create new main event stars. Top stars such as Brock Lesnar and Goldberg had departed the company and this led to Vince McMahon selecting APA member Bradshaw to ascend to the main event scene in WWE. Bradshaw was a decent wrestler and was relatively popular with fans, but for this tag team wrestler to become a main eventer, he was going to need a drastic yeah. character change. Bradshaw would now become John Bradshaw Layfield and he was a villainous, hateful, rich snob mm -hmm. and this gimmick was executed to near perfection. Within weeks, fans were completely on board with JBL being a top heel in the company and his feud with Eddie Guerrero was universally applauded <laughs> by fans. The character change was sudden, but it worked. Mm -hmm. JBL would then be cemented as one of the top stars in the company and he'd be positioned as a main event talent for the next several years. Which is no crazy, man. His transformation as that, that heel character, it worked. It definitely worked people legitimately despise jbl and you know it was one of those things where you know he's at the right place at the right time number nine may young classic rhea ripley to judgment day rhea ripley mm, oh i know Upon you guys don't love this one young classic rhea ripley seemed to be a generic baby face yeah she had blonde hair and seemed to have all the tropes of a traditional baby face wwe and ripley then made a drastic decision to alter her persona she would become a much darker, sinister character with a metal sounding theme song and her in-ring work would be altered to accommodate this new character. Which, this new which persona worked. led to tremendous success both in NXT and on the main roster. And since her transition into this edgier persona, fans have accepted Ripley as one of the top female talents in the entire company. This evolution has continued into Ripley's time as part of the Judgment Day stable as her work in the popular stable is a stark contrast to the work Ripley initially That's offered fans so back crazy. in the May Young Classic. Look at her, Number eight. She, she's so happy and innocent and now she's uh, <laughs> dark and sinister and you guys love it. <laughs> but once again, it's a good, it's being at the right place at the right time. Like if she would have came in with the gimmick she had in the May Young Classic, she probably wouldn't have gotten over as well. But at the same time, at the same time, they were able to find something, change her gimmick, give her more of a dark, edgier, gothic type vibe. And then even when she went over to the main roster, she was still a, you know, she was a baby face, but had that vibe. But then when she joined Judgment Day, it was perfect. And now she's like one of the top women in WWE. It's, it's it's crazy what a good transformation and character change can do to a person's character. The monstrous Brodus Clay to the Funkosaurus. Oh, now when Brodus this Clay one. was set to return to TV in 2012, fans firmly expected Clay to return to his monstrous ways. 
Clay was a super heavyweight who had previously been a bodyguard to Alberto Del Rio, and WWE's promo packages were making it seem like Clay was set for a huge push as a villainous character. However, when Clay returned to TV dancing to Somebody Call My Mama, sporting a red tracksuit and claiming he was from Planet Funk, fans were utterly speechless. Just WWE awful, were trolling the audience with this character change, and they were adamant on getting it over. Clay would be presented insanely strong, and he would even be given a prominent segment during WrestleMania 28. Number 7. Albert to Tensai In 2012, WWE decided yeah, I I to bring about Matt that Bloom, aka Albert, aka A-Train, back for another run. Bloom had great success in Japan in years prior to his WWE return, so they decided to capitalize on this by painting Japanese symbols on his face, giving him a helmet, and having a man named Sakamoto accompany him to the ring. They would this. rechristen Bloom as Lord Tensai, and his prior gimmicks in WWE would never be mentioned. Just a few matches into his run as Tensai, the crowd would heckle him with chants of Albert, as the crowd <laughs> just didn't understand why Tensai was a completely different character. This run was a colossal failure, yeah, and before fans knew it, Tensai was regulated to a comedic act before he eventually retired to become a full-time trainer in NXT. Crazy. Number 6, Bailey the Hugger to Bailey the Role Model hmm. When Bailey was in NXT, she was so popular that fans as well as wrestling legends believed that she would be the female equivalent of John Cena. Yeah. However, when she got to the main roster, her babyface persona wasn't connecting with the audience. A and that's because of her damn booking decisions. I forgot what match it was where she didn't want to use a kendo stick even though it was like part of the match that she could use and she didn't want to use it. That just... Ugh. You can be a babyface and get angry and fight back. <laughs> the turn seemed out of the question, but in 2019, WWE left fans shocked when they did the unthinkable. Which was great. On an episode of Raw, Bailey would side with Sasha Banks, officially turning heel. Which she would was then great. ditch the lovable hugger persona and she became the role model. She would cut her hair, ditch the fun music, and she would even destroy the Bailey buddies. Yes. Bailey's work as a heel was unbelievable. Whilst the initial shock of the character shift was undeniable, was the heel turn and subsequent persona overhaul was with without Sasha question was the even better. decision. Number 8, Kane the Demon to Kane the Corporate Stooge. Yeah. The WWE have implemented some... My man had one of the coolest entrances, like coolest uh, theme songs to what he became. <laughs> Controversial changes to Kane's persona and character over the years, but in 2013, they arguably went too far. Too the far. former demonic character would turn into a corporate stooge for Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. This shocked fans because even when Kane was a likable babyface, the law surrounding his backstory was still intact. Yeah. However, they seemingly annihilated Kane's entire gimmick and persona overnight. Kane was in essence now just a normal guy who just <laughs> wanted a corporate job. It made little to no sense. Fans were totally dumbfounded that Kane was on board with changing his character in such a damaging manner. Number 4. Pete Dunne to Butch Pete Dunne attained a reputation for being one of the best in-ring workers in the world, and when it was reported that he was being called up to the main roster, fans were excited. Unfortunately, when it surfaced that WWE were changing his persona as well as his name, fans were in total disbelief. Yeah. Dunne was now known as Butch, and his character could be best described as a rabid pit bull. Yep. Whilst the character change was indeed shocking, fans were also quick to ask, why? Why was this done, and what was it supposed to achieve? What was wrong with allowing the former NXT UK champion to simply be the bruiserweight? Still don't know. Number three, Dr. Thugonomics John Cena to the face of WWE. Here's the thing. This needed to happen because the Thugonomics gimmick could only go so far. It was part of that time period to the face of John, you know, the, the face that runs the place, John Cena, you know, you know, hustle, loyalty, respect, you know, never give up, John. You know what I'm saying? It had to change because once again, John Cena doing the Dr. Thugonomics was not going to work in, like, the later 2010s. Like, you you had to kind of, you had to progress. He couldn't stay in that gimmick. So, I understand why this happens. And Dr. Thugonomics just worked in that time period, in that era. It wouldn't be too controversial to say that John Cena's Dr. of Thugonomics character was a version of Cena that made him immensely popular. The character was fun, unique, and was perfect for the ruthless aggression era audience. 
However, when Cena became the face of the company following WrestleMania 21, fans were stunned to see that Cena's character would be altered forever. Yeah. The Doctor Thugonomics character was basically dropped and Cena stopped performing raps. Yep. They clearly believed that the face of the company coming to the ring doing raps every week wasn't the way to go. And this led to a strong portion of the fan base turning on Cena. This was a shocking character shift as fans didn't think it was possible as it was in theory Cena's rap work that made fans want to see Cena in the number one position in the company. And now that element of Cena's presentation was suddenly being stripped away. Mm -hmm. According to Cena himself on the official Ruthless Aggression documentary, it was his initial idea to change his character and to abandon the rap persona. I had a personality that was attached to the people who were watching, but then slowly the people who were watching changed and there began to be more kids and more families to come to these events. I saw it happen. I didn't need a sheet of analytics. I can see it. So I said, this is it. We're changing up right now. I remember going into Vince's office and said, I have to stop rapping. Number two, the dead man. That's crazy. He was able to see it. And once again, some people may not like it, but at the end of the day, it would have got stale. You he every wrestler has to at some point change a, something about them, their persona or something to maintain their freshness. Because if you go in as the same character for so long, eventually people will get tired. We saw it with fucking Hulk Hogan turning himself into, you know, Hollywood Hogan. You know, the you know, the NWO version of Hogan. Like you needed that. The you know the good eat your vitamins and say your prayers it got stale so when he added that edge to him and he wasn't the same no more people initially were shocked but it worked in the end so an undertaker to the american badass undertaker which was but during great. the attitude era the undertaker was of the belief that his supernatural persona had grown stale Therefore, it was decided in one of the biggest character risks ever that yeah. The Undertaker would return in 2000 with a completely different persona. Which was great. The supernatural elements of Taker's persona would be replaced and instead he would appear much more human. Taker would become the American badass and fans at first were astonished that WWE changed The Undertaker's persona in but such it, a daring it, manner. It caught Once on. Once the initial shock had passed over fans, fans truly connected with the character as The Undertaker was able to express a side of him that had never been seen before. Mm -hmm. And number one, the big dog Roman Reigns to the ah, head of the table Reigns. That's a real Roman good Reigns one. Roman Reigns' babyface persona was truly hated by WWE's fan base. For it was sure. Awkward, flat, and it was clear that Reigns was portraying a character rather than a true extension of himself. Yep. Thankfully, in the summer of 2020, mm -hmm. everything changed. In truly one of the most unexpected moments in company history, so Reigns returned at the SummerSlam event Wreck as a everyone heel. In this league. was something that fans believed that WWE would never sign off on. It was truly magic. Oh, Reigns' babyface character would be ripped apart in favor of a menacing yet convincing heel. Reigns would also be paired with Paul Heyman yep. in an acclaimed pairing, and the subsequent Bloodline storyline revolving around Reigns, the Usos, and eventually Sami Zayn was some of the finest storytelling WWE had ever delivered. But they have it's one of the greatest decisions that we got to give credit to. Vince signed off on, even though Vince wasn't trying to do it. This was really a Roman Reigns-led idea, and what he wanted to do when he came back, Vince did sign off on it. So I give him. I give him uh, some, you know, kudos for at least saying, all right, cool. And I think what worked with that is because there was no crowd. I don't know if he would have signed off on it as, you know, quickly as he did if there was a crowd there, but there was no crowd. So he could kind of just experiment more. And that's the one thing I can, I can say about the pandemic era. They experimented more. They tried, they, they did a little bit. They tried different things with different wrestlers and characters they tried because you didn't have fans there. So you can kind of just go off of, you know what I'm saying, social media interaction. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to worry about, a, uh, you know, the crowd taking over a segment. You know what I'm saying? And it's because there was no people there. You just go off of what people were saying on social media. And, you know, sometimes, most of the time, I, I doubt WWE. I'm sure they check, but I doubt they really care too much about what's going on on social media, about people, you know, talking about their product or whatnot. But at the end of the day, they just seemed like they did a little bit more with different wrestlers because they didn't have fans there, so they can experiment more. And, hey, Roman Reigns coming from the big dog to the tribal chief is probably one of the best transformations we've seen 
in WWE for sure. So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite or most shocking transformation from a wrestler that you've ever seen. Not even just WWE. You can be in WCW. You can be in AEW. Let me know the one where you was like, you were shocked, but you was you started to enjoy the character switch up. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Road to 150K. And I am still the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.